So now that you can understand how we go from a single cell all the way up to an organ system, we can focus exclusively on our first uh, system, which is the digestive system. So this is unit two, the digestive system, and it's important that we know what digestion is. Digestion is when we chemically and mechanically break down our food and our drink into smaller units so that our body can absorb it and create energy from it. So it's important that you know the structures that are involved uh, with, the with the digestive system. You have the mouth, you have the pharynx, the pharynx is just basically the place where the oral cavity and the nasal cavity meet uh, right above the esophagus. So here's your pharynx. This is your esophagus right here. This is your liver. Your gallbladder. So your liver is used to, it creates bile, which is this green substance in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder is just used to house it or store the bile after it's made. This is your stomach. And right behind the stomach, if we extend this arrow over here, right behind the stomach sits the pancreas. And the pancreas in digestion is used to uh, neutralize acid as it comes from the stomach into the small intestine. And uh, it also has to do with the breakdown of sugars. So there's your pancreas, your small intestine, your large intestine. This is your appendix. It's not necessarily a, di a digestive organ. It's more of a vestigial organ, meaning that we don't use it anymore for anything. That's your rectum. And then your anus is, th is at the very end of your digestive tract. So the reason why we call the small intestine the small intestine, even though it is actually longer than the large intestine, is because it's smaller in diameter. So the large intestine is larger in diameter than the small is. The small intestine is about 7 meters long. So there are two types of digestion. You can break down everything you do to digest food. You can break it down into two groups. It's either mechanically digested or it's chemically digested. So if it's mechanically digested, it means you physically break the food down into smaller units. So uh, ways that you can do that are either through mastication. Mastication is the actual chewing of the food. It's a fancy scientific term used to uh, describe what chewing is. So if you physically break down food with your teeth, then you're masticating it. And when you use the muscular contractions of your esophagus to push a bolus of food down your esophagus, that's called peristalsis. So peristalsis is the term given to muscle, muscular contractions of something. So if it's in the esophagus, we call it peristalsis of the esophagus. And if it's in the stomach, we say peristalsis of the stomach. So as you can see here, um, regardless of if you're upside down or not, the esophagus will still contract behind the bolus of food. So even if the person was upside down, and we did this, the muscular contractions would still happen above the food, and it will still push it down towards the stomach. Okay, so even if you're upside down, you can still swallow your food. Chemical digestion is when we use something called enzymes to break food down. So we're not physically breaking it down. We're using different chemicals to break it down. So we have different substrates, and substrates would be what the enzymes break down. So in this picture here, we have a specific enzyme that would break down carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are anything like any kind of complex sugar, uh, breads, potatoes, um, sandwiches, cake, any type of junk food has carbohydrates and sugar. So this enzyme would attach specifically to this after it's been chewed up, and it would turn it into smaller units of sugar. So in real life, what actually happens is something called amylase, an enzyme called amylase, will go and break down the carbohydrates and turn it into something called maltose, which is a more simple sugar. So what the enzyme attaches to is called the substrate, and what the enzyme makes as a result is called the product. We also see this when enzymes attach to protein and make amino acids. And we also see it when certain enzymes attach to fats or lipids and break them down into fatty acids. So again, what the enzyme attaches to is called the substrate. What it breaks it down to is the product. This chart basically summarizes all the different enzymes that our body uses. There are more, but these are some of the basic and more popular ones. You'll be expected to be able to interpret this table, um, but you won't be expected to memorize it. So the first column here, that's the source. That means that that's where the enzyme is coming from. This is the type of enzyme and its name. This is what the enzyme attaches to, and this is what the enzyme makes as a result. So if you look up here, something called amylase will attach to starch and break it down into maltose.
Okay, this happens in the mouth by the salivary glands. In the stomach, something called pepsin will attach to proteins and break them into peptides. There's also something secreted by the stomach called renin. And renin, um, it basically targets milk and it coagulates the milk. So as a result of renin, you get coagulated milk in the stomach. And coagulation actually helps to slow down the milk as it goes through your body system. So you're able to absorb more nutrients because it usually passes through fast. Now the pancreas makes pancreatic amylase, trypsin, and lipase. And these items here, these enzymes, actually get secreted into the small intestine through a duct. So even though they're created by, pan by the pancreas, they're not released into the pancreas. They're released into the small intestine. So the pancreatic amylase will turn starch into maltose. Trypsin will turn proteins into peptides. And lipase will break fats into fatty acids and glycerols. Now also in the small intestine, you have maltase, peptidase, and lactase. These three enzymes are actually made by the small intestine and delivered in the small intestine, whereas these ones are delivered in the small intestine but made in the pancreas. So maltase would break down maltose, which was broken down before, which was a product before. It'll take maltose, break into glucose. Peptidases will take peptides, break them into amino acids. And lactase will take lactose and break it down into glucose and other products as well. The other one is galactose. So you should be able to interpret the table. If I asked you something like um, which enzyme breaks starches into maltose, you would say amylase. And if I asked you um, what enzyme breaks maltose into glucose, you'd look down here. Maltose into glucose, that's maltase. Lactase is responsible for breaking down lactose. So if you aren't able to break down uh, di certain dairy foods, you're lactose intolerant because your lactase enzyme isn't present or it's not created correctly. Okay, so you should be able to use this chart to answer simple questions about the digestive system.